I don't normally talk about the price of IPS kits because they're generally around the same price, give or take five, maybe $10. But depending on which kit you buy, there might be other costs involved if you don't already have the necessary tools like screwdrivers or a soldering iron. So today I challenged myself to find the best bang for your buck Game Boy mod, which I did, but was it worth it? Or maybe you should spend a little more to get something even better. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Now this video isn't just gonna be me buying the cheapest screen mod out there and boom, that's it. This is supposed to be a challenge video. So I'm locking all of my fancy tools away and I'm not allowed to use them. No iFixit kit, no soldering iron, but I guess I did cheat a little because I still did it on my mod mat out of habit. Please forgive me. But I'm doing this because not all of you at home have the tools that I have. I've gotten quite a few comments from people saying that they've never touched the Game Boy before, but I made them want to mod one. So I also have to take Game Boy model and price into account here. Let's start there. To get the most out of our cheapest Game Boy mod, we should pick one that can play every Game Boy game. So that instantly narrows it down to the GBA and the SP. And while prices for Game Boys are gonna be different for everyone, the SP is generally more expensive than the GBA, so we're gonna stick with the better model. Now that we have our model, let's look at mod kits. Obviously, you can save some money by using code Jake at Retro Game Repair Shop and Retro Modding, but we can save even more money by heading over to AliExpress where they have all the same kits and more for cheaper. The only downside is we gotta wait a little bit longer and the packaging will be sketchy. I'm gonna do a deep dive into this sea of listings so you don't have to. For this video, I'm requiring that it's at least an IPS screen. I feel like anything less like a front light kit would be more of a fizzle for your buck. And since we're starting fresh with no tools, we'll be choosing a solderless kit that drops into an original shell with no trimming. And ever since I dreamed up this video, I assumed that we would be choosing the non-laminated version of the V5 from High Speed Edo. But there's actually a kit that's even cheaper that fits all the criteria. Meet the V5.4 by Cloud Game Store. For only $40, you can get this IPS kit and it comes with all the tools we need, including the two necessary screwdrivers. Future Jake here, I paid $40 for this kit, but you can actually get it for $35 at this link that I'll have linked down below. There isn't much here, so let's start tearing this thing down. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six tri-wing screws here. Man, I have not used, actually, I don't know if I've ever used one of these screwdrivers before but I do not enjoy this at all. I'm missing the spinny top on my iFixit screwdriver simply because this is now a two-handed job and I have to put so much pressure for it to actually just spin and unscrew and not just spin on the top of it. Okay, then we can go to our other screwdriver. That's the Phillips head. And we can do that down here in the battery department, compartment, department, that same thing. And then, hopefully we unscrewed it enough, boom, you just lift that up. Here we have two Phillips screws on each side. Sometimes there's going to be one here instead of over here. And sometimes there's going to be one here, here, and here. There's pretty much always going to be one over here, though. And we can just try to unscrew those with these really crappy screwdrivers. Now we're going to need to remove the screen from the motherboard. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these two tabs up here and just push those up. If you've pulled it out enough, you can just lift up the motherboard and the ribbon will come right out of the connector. If it doesn't, don't force it. It means you didn't lift up the, the bail enough. And normally I would discard the shell, put it away and get out a new one because I like to keep things fresh and clean and cool looking, but that's not what we're doing today. We're doing the cheapest mod possible. So we're actually going to put the motherboard off to the side, and we're gonna tear this down even further. Now, if your screws are not already out of your back half, you can go dump those out and take all of the plastic buttons out and the rubber membranes. Just dump all of these. I guess we could have just gone like that. That works too. We can take our light pipe out. Don't lose this. It's fine if you do, but try not to lose it. And then we're gonna take our shell like this, and we're gonna twist and twist, like Kesha's first kiss. Not everybody gets that reference. I believe it's a 303 song that Kesha also did with them. Thankfully, this mod comes with a screen lens, a glass screen lens, so we don't really need to worry about removing the screen lens or worry about keeping it 
safe. If you are going to reuse the screen lens, I recommend taking it out because we're going to dump everything in a nice soapy bath. And these screen lenses can kind of get ruined when they go in the water. What we're going to do here, because we're not even going to reuse this, is we're going to punch this out with our thumbs. So I like to go at the top corners, push it out, and then go to the bottom, and then eventually it comes out. We can put all that off to the side, and the only things left to do are remove this. Now, I believe we can use our Phillips head here. Yep, and we can just remove these four smaller Phillips screws here. Do not get these mixed up with your motherboard screws. And then we can take this metal piece out. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna need to remove the battery connector thing here. It's pretty simple. We're gonna take our Phillips screwdriver because it's a little bit thinner. We're gonna stick it in this hole right here. At least we're gonna try. It's gonna be a tight fit, but we should be able to just push through and take it out and slowly back that out. And if you do care about this sticker, you can try and remove it with a blow dryer, get it nice and hot and peel it off. If you have some tweezers or something maybe, but I'm gonna keep mine on. It's probably not gonna look the best after it's a little bath we're gonna give it. I'm not too worried about it. Assuming that you have water and soap at home that you can use, uh, you can just put this in your sink, assuming you have a stopper in your sink and hopefully your sink is clean. <laughs> but I'm gonna actually use a bucket because I have one laying around on hand. I'm just gonna dump everything, every piece of plastic, every single piece, even the metal pieces, because we're gonna be quick enough and dry these out. It's not gonna matter. But every piece of plastic, except I forgot something. Your L and R buttons have these little metal tabs. We can just pull those out and put those off to the side. They might be a little hard to pull out. It's fine. We just don't want to trap any water in between the plastic and the metal there. We don't want anything to rust, so we're going to take those out. But now that we've got everything in our bucket, we can go to the sink. All I really do is let it soak in a bucket of hot water with basic dish soap for like an hour or so before scrubbing it with a toothbrush. Then I rinse it off and pat it down with a towel before letting everything dry overnight. It is the next day and everything is cleaned and dried. It actually looks really nice. But we can go ahead and place this down like so. And let's get out our mod kit that came in a very cheaply packaged way. But hey, I think it's all good. At least our screen is in some bubble wrap. And we can empty this bag that is for some reason separated from the screen. We've got our two connectors. We've got two double-sided tapes for some reason. Interesting. So it has us use this piece here and sticking it down on this side to even out with the bumps over here. And then we put the double-sided tape on top of that. Very interesting. And we can flatten that out. We should be able to punch that out somewhat easily. Stick that over there. Then we can peel this back. I'm missing my tweezers about now. There we go. And then in the instructions, there's two pieces, but there's only one piece here. So I'm just going to put it down in the middle like that to keep it as even as possible. So before we put the screen in, what I like to do is place our screen lens on. And we're going to do this all very quickly as to get as little dust as possible between the screen and the lens. So once we peel this, we're going to grab it by the edges here. We're going to place it down in the hole and we're going to place it down like that. And we're going to peel the peel of the screen and it's going to be oriented like this. And we're going to push it all the way down against that acrylic piece and it should fit very tightly between the sides here. And now we should hopefully be all lined up and dust free. I have no idea if there's dust there or not. So now we can take our motherboard and slide it in here. And that white line should line up with the connector. There's gonna be a tiny bit of brown space between. Then we can lock down the connector like that. It's gonna go from up to folding down like that away from the ribbon cable. Now here we have two ribbon cables. Depending on your motherboard, we can go over here and see that this has a little 40 underneath the connector in this corner over here. So that means we have a 40 pin connector. We're gonna use the one that says 40P. 
if you have a 32 here, you should use the one that says 32P. I'm gonna take my 40P and slide it in this connector pin side down and then lock that tab down like that. And I'm gonna fold this touch sensor over like this so it fits in underneath like that. Future Jake here, if yours does happen to come with an extra piece like mine did, or at least the leftover piece that I'm gonna tell you to use to put down here, if I haven't told you that already, I don't know where I'm inserting this. I'm going to assume you have some scissors at home and you can just cut off a piece of the extra or a piece of the remaining double-sided tape. Doesn't have to be very big. This is fine. Peel one side of it off and you can attach it to your touchpad there. Peel the other side off and stick it up against the top piece there. And to keep this protected, I'm actually going to use our double-sided tape from earlier, our leftover, stick it down there and peel it back and then just stick this motherboard down like so. And then that should prevent the motherboard from touching this motherboard. And then we can put in our buttons and membranes, D-pad over here, B on the inside, A on the outside. A and B membranes, D-pad membranes. Don't forget your light pipe that goes over here. And we're gonna leave the side pieces L and R and the power switch for last. Future Jake again. My A and B weren't working so well, so I'm actually going to take the membranes out. And I'm going to use a paper towel and some alcohol, things that I assume you will have in your house. Put some alcohol on the paper towel, take your membrane black side down and just rub it across there do it to both pads for a and b and it should give a little bit of life back into your membranes you can do that with all of them i'll do it with the d-pad since i'm here you just want to be careful not to rip the membranes when you're rubbing them across they're pretty fragile and we can take our motherboard like this slot the speaker in over on this side and push that motherboard down then we can take our phillips screwdriver and put our two or three Phillips screws back down, and then we can slot our ribbon cable into the top connector here and lock those two tabs down. Those two end pieces should be flush with the rest of the connector, and it should look something like this. Now we can go ahead and put in our side pieces. The one with the notch is over on this side. We can reinsert the metal posts for L and R, and we can slot L and R up here and our power switch down here. I'm gonna put that top half off to the side for a second because we are going to reinstall this metal shielding here. Again, with our Phillips head screwdriver, we can put those four tiny Phillips screws back down and then flipping it over on this side, we can take our battery thing and just slot that back in just like that. And we can recenter our top half, put on the back half, Use the Phillips head in the battery compartment, and then our six tri-wing screws in those six original spots that we took them out of. And we are done. I am not gonna miss these things at all. If you still need a little more help, I'll have an extended cut of the tutorial up on the second channel, Jake64. It'll be linked in the description next to the link to buy this kit. Since recording this tutorial, the touchpad has refused to respond to anything. So I decided since I'm gonna have to open this up anyway, I might as well just do the optional soldering so I can actually see all the options this thing has to give it a fair review. And even after I fully disassembled this thing, the touchpad wouldn't work at all. I don't know what's wrong with it. If your touchpad still works, quick taps adjust the brightness levels and long presses go through the screen modes. If you decide to solder, select an R cycles brightness and select an L cycles screen modes. I have no idea what F0 mode is, but it looks no different from the HD mode. And for those who care, there is a pixel grid, horizontal lines and vertical lines, each with black and white modes. It is fairly dim to fairly bright between its eight brightness levels, and the panel has pretty good colors in my opinion. Overall, this kit is fairly similar to Funny Playing's 3.0 kit. Between the brightness levels and power draw, heck, both of them have their own touchpad issues. And while they are very close, I still wouldn't recommend this kit over others. As cheap as it is, I think you're way better off spending a few extra dollars on High Speed Edo's drop-in kit. While I despise touchpads, I haven't really had any issues with High Speed Edo's. And if you can solder, High Speed Edo's kit offers a little more feature-wise and has slightly better colors. 
But for only $35 and a bit of elbow grease, assuming your touchpads work, I guess this kit isn't half bad. Personally, I would rather spend a little bit more to have a better experience. I will have this kit linked below as well as a link to my ultimate GBA IPS kit comparison video if you want to see all of the other options in more detail. But what do you guys think? Let me know in those comments down below. All I can think about is how much I miss using my own tools. I appreciate them so much more now. But that's really it for this one. So like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later, guys. Also, I got the Hello Kitty one since I was doing it to the pink GBA. I guess I'm just a Hello Kitty fan now. I don't know. I don't like the logo at the top, though. It's ugly.